Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for Motion Tutorials with a new video of my top five hidden features of Adobe Illustrator. So working in Illustrator can be one of the most useful and versatile apps in the Adobe suite, whether you're doing graphic design, illustration, or even prepping assets for video. But some of the best features can be a bit hidden and aren't right out in front in any default menus or buttons. So to get you doing some cool new tricks, I wanted to go over my top five hidden features in Adobe Illustrator. Let's get started. Number one, transform again plus rotate. So one of the coolest features I use all the time is this object transform again up here or command D and this can do all sorts of stuff. And if you combine it with other commands like rotate, you can do some really creative things. So say I have a circle and I make a copy of that right next to it by holding shift to constrain and alt to duplicate and then let go of the mouse, it makes a copy. And if I go to object transform, transform again or command D, it creates another copy that's exactly spaced from where that first one was. And if I keep pressing Command D or just hold it, it'll continue to make copies. And that goes for anything that I've done for the last move. So if I select all of these and drag them down holding Shift and Alt and copy the whole row, then it would create multiple copies if I kept doing Command D. And say I had these moved over here in a different color and a little staggered. If I selected all of those and make a copy, again, Command D creates a whole series of those. So you can use this function to really quickly and easily create some creative patterns. But another thing I really like about it is if we combine it with this rotate tool right here, or R, we can create some really unique things. So say I had this circle in the middle and I'll create another copy and then scale it down by holding Shift and Command. If we wanted a pattern exactly around this of those circles, rather than trying to make copies and keep it even or worry about it, what we can do is press R or grab this tool. And rather than just rotating it, we can click somewhere else and it's going to change the anchor point and then it's gonna rotate around that. So what I could do is click the center of my artboard or the center of this other circle, then move it up, hold Alt while I'm dragging and then let go to create a copy. And now if I do Command D, it's going to run that around in a circle so we get this exactly precise pattern of these circles. And if I just undo that quickly, if we wanted them at 45 degrees to be really precise, we could press R and while we're dragging this, hold Shift in Command and then it's gonna snap it to 45 degree angles. And then I can just do Command D again and we can get a quick exact pattern of these circles or any shapes around this. So using this transform again or command D function and combining with other tools like rotate can give you some really awesome and mathematically precise results that otherwise would be pretty difficult if not impossible to replicate. Number two, polygon shape options. So you may know underneath these shape buttons there's polygon and star. So if I grab the polygon, I can drag to create a hexagon. But one additional feature you can do is say you wanted a polygon with more or less sides while you're dragging, if you press up or down, it will add or subtract a side. So if you want an octagon, you could press up twice. And if you wanted to go all the way down to a triangle, you could just press down and get a quick triangle. And if you need another shape, you can just draw again and up or down to add or subtract sides all the way until you get to basically a circle. And then you could go back down again to a triangle. And if we grab this star tool, by default with the star tool, if I drag it, it'll create a five sided star. But if I press up or down, it adds a side to the star and we can quickly create some pretty interesting shapes. And if you ever wanted to access these with just menus, you can actually just select the star tool Instead of starting to draw, just click, and that gives you this menu with your radius of the star and the points. So you can even change the angles on the star right there. Number three, align to artboard. So one useful feature in Illustrator is this align menu, which lets you align and distribute objects. So if you had, say, a bunch of squares and they were kind of all over the place or you need to even out your shapes, you could grab everything and you could align them along the edges of the selection or align top, as well as fix the space in between by distributing objects. And this is the default menu for this, but one thing that's useful is if we click this a couple more times, 
we get these extra options where we can change what it's aligning to. And one option is artboard. And I use this all the time for things like shapes and guides. So if we change this to align to artboard, now if we make some shapes, instead of aligning to themselves, it'll snap them all to edges of the artboard. So if you wanted something exactly centered, you could align the objects vertical and horizontal, and it's gonna snap to the center. And one useful little trick is you can do this with guides. So if we drag out a guide from our rulers, which we can get with command R, and then go to view guides and uncheck lock guides, we can select this. We can actually snap it to the edges. So if you want quick guides that are along each edge and the center, you can just drag them out from the side and rather than trying to eyeball it and get it to where you want, you can just drag some guides, select them, and know that it's gonna be exactly there. And then you could just lock your guides again. So it's a really useful little bonus menu under align to know that besides selection, you can also align to artboard and change that back and forth. Number four, paste in front and back. So this one's a little unique to Illustrator, whereas there are some different paste options. If we grab some of these, the default copy paste that we see in any application still works. So if we select some stuff and do command C and then paste, it pastes it, but it pastes it in the center of what we're looking at. And sometimes we might want to paste it in the exact same place for different reasons. So say that we had all of these and we want to create some copies in the same place and then scale them all out. Rather than copy pasting and then moving them back in, what we can do is copy with command C and then command F. And it doesn't look like anything happened, but it pastes it in front, which also pastes it exactly in place. So now if I scale those up from the center by holding command and option, you can see that there's a copy. And this is something I use all the time for things like taking some artwork, maybe say we didn't have these corners and we're gonna need some on the other side. There's a lot of ways we could do it, but we could just copy and then paste in front, command F and then rotate. And quickly we can snap these over there without needing any extra menus and not have to try to paste and then put it back where it is. And the way that it's working and why it's command F is, is because it's pasting in front, which is what the F stands for in command F. And there's also paste in back, which is command B. So say we wanted to, as quick as we can, put this behind it or send it to the back. So what we can do is just cut with Command X and then Command B, which is paste in back. So doing cut, copy, paste, and knowing that there's those couple extra ones of Command F or Command B for paste in front and back can give you some really quick and precise options. Number five, corner radius options. This is definitely one of my favorite features that's been added to Illustrator in recent versions. It was added in the first Creative Cloud. And what this is, is if we select any paths like these rectangles, you'll notice these little white circles on the inside. And if we grab those and pull to the right, you can see that it's rounding those corners. And there's a little pop-up that's telling you how much it's rounding it. And It'll evenly round whatever our selection is. And if we wanted to go back, we could just grab those white dots again and then just pull to the left and then we get our paths back. And what's great about this is you can select multiple paths, get the direct select arrow with A and it'll let you do it on multiple paths. And this includes everything, even if it's not just squares. So if we had this capital S as a font and we wanted to outline it with shift command O to get it as path, if we just select all of this and then get our direct select arrow or press A, you can see that those dots show up here as well. So we can just drag and pull and we'll get even curves and rounding on all of this. The little hidden feature part of this is if you wanna do this by an exact number, you can, or get some additional options, you can double click on these circles and type in the radius. So we could just type in a number or click up and you can see that it'll max out at whatever is possible. So 1.65 in this case is as high as it's gonna go. And I can go to okay and you can see that they're all evenly rounded. And if I wanted to take that off, I could just drag to the left. And the other thing that's cool is you could change the type of corner and how it's handling the rounding. So if we wanted not a round, but a more chamfered corner, we could select that and then turn it up. And you can see, we'll get that. And again, we could just undo that and also get this little inverted round and we'll get little cuts and you'll see that it applies to everything. 
and you can even change how it's rounding it, whether it's relative or absolute where it's keeping them all consistent. So these rounding options are really useful and knowing that there's this extra little click menu can be really helpful when you're working with this feature. So those are my top five hidden Illustrator tips. There's hundreds more of little things you can do in Illustrator, but those are some of the ones I'm always coming back to. If there's any little tips or features you use, you can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella or let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about new features and top tips for things like Photoshop, After Effects, Cinema 4D and 3D software, be sure to check out some of my other videos by clicking the thumbnails that are up now and by subscribing on YouTube to get new videos at least every week. Thanks for watching. This has been Sean Frangel with my top five hidden illustrator tricks and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.